Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts. Today I have another story by Darth Vendar, the creator of the Miklos Horthy stories. The French have been utterly defeated. With Germany pushing through the east with tactful and brilliant strategy, the Austro-Hungarian and Italian forces push through the south. Now the French state is under German occupation, as the central powers figure out what to do with the nation, while the fight with Russia continues ruthless and bloody. As the debate is ongoing on whether to restore the Bourbons or the Bonapartes, the UK has issued a formal complaint demanding that France not be further occupied and released as a democratic state. To show that the UK should stay out of matters that involve mainland Europe, Emperor Otto von Habsburg has decided to do a show of force. The newly completed SMS Habsburg has been launched as a pet project for the Emperor and a massive headache for our various naval designers. The Emperor has decided a shakedown cruise is in order and shall be done through the English Channel to show our superiority. The Habsburg class was originally planned and designed after the Emperor heard rumors of the US building something called a Tillman battleship. While the rumors are beyond unconfirmed, the Emperor sat down with his best designers and practically gave them all a heart attack with what he proposed. A monumental ship with A, B, C, X, Y, Z turret configuration thick armor, and an enormous broadside of 8-inch secondaries. The old guard have determined it a mastercraft, while the new guard have called it a terror on the national budget. No doubt the best man to command is Admiral Miklos Horthy himself. Surely, with a vessel of this magnitude, the British will hold their tongue. So I am to design a big battleship, but there are some constraints. Let's have a look. Darth Vendor has specified that it needs to be the modernized Dreadnought hull. And then it needs to have maximum displacement. Of course, this has to be called the SMS Habsburg. Um, maximum displacement, bulkheads must be set to maximum. Range must be set to medium A, B, C, X, Y, Z configuration. 16 or 18 inch guns, main battery with 9 inch C and X turrets. Okay. Um... All casemate slots must be filled with 8-inch guns. Right. That's going to be interesting. Now, let's first up the armor scheme. I'm going to be taking on a couple of British battleships, so I want to make sure that the ship is heavily protected. Especially anti-flooding could be a, an important part here. Alright, so 8-inch casemates. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's 8 8-inch eight guns per side. Their firing angles are limited but they seem fairly well protected. Right then, a main gunnery of 16 or 18 inch guns. Let's see, can I fit that on this hull? I think it's gonna be pretty tight. Especially if you want an ABC XYZ format. I think it's gonna have to be 16 duels. 18s are nice, but they're only... Well, they're actually, they're also Mark III. I suppose that if the Emperor would design a ship, or at least have a hand in designing a ship, that he would want something with 18-inch guns. Because it is, of course, his ego that's on the line. Okay. Uh, that sort of fits. Then I can put a tall barbette for secondaries on here. And we're gonna go with even more secondaries. Oh, actually, no, they need to be main 9 inches. Interesting setup. Unfortunately, that is too tall. Uh, is there any other way to fit that? This is just an enlarged superimposed barbette, which is what I need to figure out, or to, to fit the 18 incher. If I go with 16s, they're going to be slightly less tall. And thereby, maybe it would fit. Let's test that theory. Center lines, 16 dual barrels, and then a 9-inch dual barrel on top. See, then it fits. It doesn't look as intimidating, though. I quite like the look of the 18s. If I put them in a line... Wow! Wow! I didn't think that would actually fit on the hull, but I'll take it. It does mean I'm going to have to put quite a lot of belt armor on this ship. Because in order to fire these, I would have to turn pretty far broadside. 
All right, let's throw a funnel on there before I forget to do that. Uh, he said enthusiastically and then promptly couldn't fit it. Really? I cannot put a... Um, wow. I cannot put a funnel on the secondary tower. What's all this space for then? Auxiliary craft. Fuel efficiency, not great. Let's go with diesel 2. 78. Now we're getting somewhere. Right. I also need to copy this format and put it on the stern. Um, about that. That's going to be very difficult with this secondary tower. With this one, I might have a bit more room. But accuracy is four points lower. No, I do want this one. What about the main tower? Nah, it's modern tower, period. Um... What? Oh, crap, that thing was married onto the secondary, or onto the, the barbette. And since the barbette is now missing an action... I have no idea how, put, how to put that 9-inch on. Center line, 9-inch, dual... Oh, it does fit. Okay. And this also fits. Oh, excellent. Right, so then I can move this thing forward. Move this... No, this hull has not yet been updated, so I cannot move that farther forward, which means that the superstructure is also locked into place. This is going to get pretty tricky. I can build an A, B, C, X, Y, but not an X, Y, Z format. It just doesn't fit on this hull. Even with a smaller secondary tower. Well, if it is what the Emperor wants, it's what the Emperor shall have. Um, it's just not going to shoot straight. Accuracy is going to leave quite a bit to be desired, I'm afraid. Let's make sure that these things reload quickly, that they turn fairly quickly. That they have heavy shells, which will also benefit the 8-inchers. And um, let's go with 2-powder, so that the 8-inch guns have all even more firepower. I'll take an auxiliary engine. A bit of this, a bit of oil. Uh, speed, 28 knots. Should be fast enough. Rangefinder would be much appreciated, I suppose. Stereoscopic. Generation 2 radar. Got about 3,000 tons left. Sorry, two and a half, actually. How quickly does this thing turn? Not very. 822 meters. Now, this ship is supposed to have an impressive and intimidating 8-inch secondary battery. She already has quite a few in the form of casemates. But if I can put even more on, I suppose that would please the Emperor. At least I hope it does. I just don't know if these things will properly turn. I'm afraid they will not. Uh, let's go with a few fivers. Because the fivers don't take up as much room. Or as much weight. And hopefully will allow the ship to still carry a secondary armament that's capable of dealing with destroyers. There we go. Slight four weight offset. Unfortunately this thing doesn't want to scoot back. Do you want to scoot back? Point 0.2, that's more like it. Alright, so we got uh, 8 secondary 5 inches and then 8 8 inches. And now I suppose more armor is in place. Or at least requested. Let's go with uh, 8 inch armor on the secondaries. 18 inches on the turret should be fine. A bit more on the conning tower. And then uh, quite a bit more on the belt. 15 inches of belt armor. Can we get to 9 inches of secondary? Sorry, belt extended. Yes. 10. 10 even. I thought that would be pushing it, but we got it. Starting range is 18,000 meters. So that's why I'm reinforcing the belt more so than the deck. 
And then again, even if you do reinforce the deck, you're going to run into trouble because it usually doesn't work too well. All right, a um, little bit left. Up the conning tower to 19.4, and that should be her. All right, we are taking on the British, but there is one more caveat. Now, as for the final lineup, this is what we're fighting. Two battleships, a battle cruiser, two heavies, a light and a destroyer, or seven. But here's a problem. Disaster. The British have called our bluff. As we moved past Dover, a squadron of swordfish torpedo bombers went on an attack run on the Habsburg. While lucky most of the spread was avoided, a single torpedo has hit and damaged the engines. To make matters worse, the British fleet is on its way. Either drive the enemy away with the crippled Habsburg, or ensure one of the accompanying vessels rescues the Admiral before retreating. In order to simulate the damage to the engines, I'm going to throw the engines in reverse. That immediately cripples all the engines. And I'm going to put them in forward motion again. This does mean that for the moment I have very little, if any, propulsion. And, um, wow, that's also going to impact my turning. And I do seem to be heading towards the enemy. Is the enemy also heading towards me? Sort of. This is one of their battleships. They're carrying 920 inch guns. Oof. Okay, so that's 18 20 inch guns per. Uh, or total. Uh, this one carries 8 18 inch guns. The Brits are serious. 9 6 inch guns on the heavy cruiser, which seems to have forgotten to mount a middle section. A light cruiser armed with 6 inch guns. Again, uh, 8 of them. And then we have destroyers. Which seem to have... Oh, there's the torpedo section. The torpedo launchers on the bow. And one single on the stern. Interesting design. I have assistance from the Sankt Pollen and the Ushok. This is a maximum bulkhead heavy cruiser with 8 inch guns. Not a terrible design in the form of ABXY. 4 inch guns, 2 inch guns, lots of 2 inch guns and even more 2 inch guns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great stuff for dealing with destroyers. Unfortunately, range is somewhat limited, but the range is 8.5. So you're firing... Yeah, you're firing heavy shells. She has a couple of 21-inch short-range fast torpedo launchers. The DD, another escorting ship. 13-kilometer range torpedoes, 23-inch, very sneaky. Minimum bulkheads on the DD... That is not great. You're going to follow the Habsburg around. You're going to immediately smoke up. And with the torpedo launchers that you have, I want you to go... No, actually, I don't want you to go after anyone just yet. Because I don't exactly know what they're going to do. I think they're turning. So I first want to know what they're up to before I engage. Taking a couple of screenshots there. Alright. Habsburg has already fixed two of her engines. The British might have drawn first blood, but that does not scare the Habsburg. Secondaries on that thing, mains on the battleship. Considering this massive fleet, I want to turn around as quickly as I can. I'm very much uninterested in sticking out this fight. And I want to try and damage their big damage dealers as quickly as possible. So the battleships and the battle cruiser have to go. Um, if I'm feeling confident enough, I will then go for the smaller ships with all those 8-inch guns. And show the British what's what. 18-inchers are already very much locked on target. Oof. Their 18-inchers are dealing damage to my main guns. They're only partial pens, but... Whoa! There goes a secondary turret, or a second main turret. At this rate, this is going to cause flash fires, or at least it has the potential to. Okay, we got six guns on target. The stern still isn't firing. Oof, look at that. That X turret does not look good. Same for the B turret. I think it's properly scorched. Alright, buddy. Do some damage. And do it quickly. Because the British are very much dealing damage to this new pride of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. 
Now, this is kind of what I was expecting. The British are turning in. So I'm going to turn away as much as I can. While having the D... Oh, 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 hold on. Heavy cruiser is going a bit aggressive there. Uh, give me control of the DD. Your torpedo range was 13, so you're going to have to speed away. Move to within torpedo range and then attack. I'm going to try to angle the ship as much as I can. Hopefully keeping the turrets alive. And keeping the guns firing at the approaching British battleships. Is there any chance I can hit this one? Not great. Secondaries on that. I want the heavy cruiser's gun on that. My problem now is that the British are also angling, so my chance to pen is limited. Ooh. We're taking some serious damage from those 20 inch guns. What was that? Bow belt uh, extended. Okay. Speed. Limited to 25. Good grief, that was a ton of damage. Engines out. Two sections on uh, flooding. Several more on fire. This is not going well. Can we torpedo them yet? No, not yet. Get closer. Follow the Admiral's flagship. I think the Sankt Pollen should be kept safe. Because at this rate, I am very much unsure about whether the Habsburg is going to survive this battle. There are too many British warships about with two big guns. They just deal too much damage to me. Even though I'm slowly but steadily repaying the favor to this warship, this battleship, it's just... Well, it's, it's taken a couple of good hits, but all of its turrets are alive. By the way, how on earth... Did you fit 20-inch guns on that little barbette? That is some British engineering that I have not yet managed to put on my own ships. Now, I think it doesn't really matter how I angle the ship, because those things are going to hit and pen. So probably the best I can do is try to run away, blade the ship as much as possible, and thereby, hopefully, reducing as much damage as possible. The torpedoes are away from the Ushok, which is probably the last thing it will do. Flooding on the British battleship. Casemates are getting destroyed. I thought I had the ship pretty reasonably protected, but not against 20 inch guns. The biggest guns in the game. And they get a lot of them. Put the secondaries and the casemate guns on the Van Sitterts. She has 20 inch torpedoes, which are reasonably well detectable. Oh crap! The B turret has been destroyed. The main tower looked like it's seen better days. The secondary tower has also seen better days. Do we have ID? Not yet, but we're close. Incoming torpedoes have been detected. These things are going to meet each other halfway. I wonder when my torps are going to get detected. Habsburg still has propulsion and she still has a rudder. Let's hope it's good enough. She's already down to 40%. And the battleship on the British end seems to be taking some decent damage, but not fast enough. This is their battle cruiser, right? Yeah, haven't been fully identified yet. These guys have. We are looking at the Dreadnought. Maximum displacement. Oh, sorry, maximum bulkheads at 73,000 displacement. 20 inch guns with heavy shells. A chance to pen? 74%. Reasonably good. Their chance to pen me is probably better. No, it's worse. It's 70 and it's dropping. I'm very heavily angled. I just hope my turrets survive for as long as possible. The Van Sittert has detected the torpedoes. 
which is prompting an action from the battleships, but at a 350 meter turning circle, they should be able to dodge that. I just wonder if the battle cruiser is going to do something stupid. The Achilles. The Achilles displacing more water than the battleships. Yeah, she's going to do something potentially really stupid. Switch fire to the Achilles. Look at that! I know I've told you that the AI has some magical a uh, magical torp dodging abilities, but this guy went out of his way to try and run into the torpedoes. Habsburg is down to 32%. Buoyancy is alright, but they knocked out a second turret. And I thought that 18 inches of turret armor would be sufficient. Well, not so much. I'm also going to be suffering from damage instability at this point. So my accuracy is going to be even less than usual. One of the destroyers has been knocked off. The Wolverine's going to be next. My ability to return fire to the Achilles is very limited. I think my 9 inches are both online. Yeah. The 9 inches are both functional, but two of the 18 inch turrets have been destroyed. Look at this thing go. This is not good. The Emperor is not going to be pleased about the performance of the ship. Achilles, despite taking two torpedoes, seems to be perfectly fine. And is dodging most, if not all, of the shell fire. The torpedoes here are passing harmlessly, not doing any damage to the Renown or the Dreadnought. Habsburg is down to 28%. The Ushok, unfortunately, will only do 17 knots. I'm going to have to get the Sankt Pollen out of here at best speed. With the Admiral aboard. The Admiral uh, quickly transferred from the Habsburg to the Sankt Pollen. Uh, uh, Sankt Pollen. To hopefully survive the battle. He's too important for the war effort. Can't afford to lose him. How are my five inches? Functional. Casemates on the stern doing their level best to keep the enemy destroyer away. I think the Achilles is maneuvering too much for me to be able to hit accurately. Switch fire to the Renown. Um, maintain fire on the destroyer. Ushok sinks. Shit. This is not good. Keep the destroyer away from the Habsburg. These things have a standard complement of bulkheads. They shouldn't be too hard to sink. And I really want to sink them before they throw even a few torpedoes into the... Uh, Already crippled Habsburg. There you go. For some reason they're stopped. Formation bug, potentially. Because this is not normal AI behavior. The Renown can still fire with very good accuracy against my uh, SMS Habsburg. And does a whole bunch more damage. Down to 25% structural integrity. Uh, the stern 9-inch gun has been destroyed. So far, somehow, I have not suffered any flash fires. I'm not sure how. <laughs> I'm happy with the result, but I'm not sure how. What's the range to the battleship there? 23 kilometers. This thing can keep hitting me out to 40 kilometers. Um, and your speed? Your speed is only 22, so the cruiser can run away. Come on. 4.4% chance to hit. Rudder damaged. I think the Wolverine won't be a problem when it comes to torpedoes. She won't be able to launch those in time to catch me. But I'm much more concerned about the 20 inch guns just blowing hole after hole after hole into the starboard aft of the ship. Look at that. Looks like the casemates also took some of the damage. And this turret over here 
Good grief. Did you see that impact? There, there, here. This looks like a partial. This is a full. That turret just took a 20 inch to the face. Which is even somewhat angled, so I think I think it might have gotten hidden twice. Because once here and once more to the side of the turret. This turret has also taken some close hits. So far it's still functional. But it has already been damaged. We will go down fighting and buy as much time as possible for the Sankt Polten to get the Admiral out. Ugh, more flooding. Renown, chance to pen. 66%, chance to pen to Renown. 73. The issue is hitting the Renown. Damage to the funnel, the ship's gonna slow down to 15 knots. Oh dear, more fire. That was another 18-inch hit from the Achilles. The message that the British are sending is clear. The Austro-Hungarian Navy and other Allied powers are not to pass through British waters unchallenged. The message is understood because at this point, the Habsburg is basically toast. Even if I'm able to blow away one of the battleships, they still have a second and they got the battlecruiser. Dreadnought has been damaged, but is pretty heavily angled, so my chance to pen is reduced. And now just blew another 9-inch shells my way. I'm oh, sorry, 9 20-inch shells. Here they come. Another fire. Another ricochet off the side of the Habsburg. She's down to 13%. Rudder is still damaged. To the point where I'm pretty much locked on course. I really cannot change much. Speed's reduced to 14 knots. Have I even hit the Renown? No, not really. Too blocked, too ricocheted. 10% structural integrity. If I would have gotten even one flash fire, I would have probably been dead already. Destroyed another main gun. You didn't really, because <laughs> I think they keep destroying the destroyed ones. At this point, buy the Sankt Polten as much time. The Sankt Polten is uh, currently about four and a half kilometers away from the Habsburg. All that she can do is make for best speed and try to get out of the area as quickly as possible, saving Admiral Horthy. But leaving your brothers in arms to die like this must be really hard. I wouldn't be surprised if the crew of the Sankt Polten is going to have uh, some form of survivor's guilt as they arrive back in their port. All the more so because their ship is pristine. They're going to wonder, did we do enough? Did we actually aid in the battle enough? The answer is yes. They did about 1400 damage. Uh, they, I think, were able to at least cripple, if not kill, a destroyer. But unfortunately, the British just brought a few more big guns, and the, the kill on the destroyer didn't matter. And with the amount of firepower that the British came in, there's not a lot that the Sankt Polten could have done to stem the flow of 20-inch shells. There she goes. Habsburg is down. I have lost sight of them, at least a majority of the ships. The Sankt Polten is now coming under fire. Fortunately, she can shift. So I'm hoping to get away from these 20-inch shells as quickly as possible. Let's hope that the naval designers who built the Sankt Polten are going to have a pretty capable rudder speed or um, engine efficiency. It's raining shells, hallelujah. Whoa, that came close. Any shell that hits me is going to do full damage, probably. Oh, secondary tower was destroyed. 
And with that, I think an 8-inch gun? Yeah. One of our 8s, actually. No, it's the barbette that got destroyed. Okay, they have lost sight of the Sankt Polten. They can't see me anymore. Admiral Horthy has successfully disengaged. Whew, that goes pretty close there for a sec. So, um, lesson learned. Don't piss off the Brits. Don't do a show of force with a pet project ship from the Emperor, because the British are not having it. They are simply not accepting nonsense like that. And the Admiral is lucky to survive with just the one ship. Survivor's guilt will be had by all, probably. And, um, well, at this rate, this is not a good step in the war effort. I hope you guys enjoyed the battle nonetheless. It was a good last stand at the Habsburg and a hell of a show of force by the Brits. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and I shall see you soon for more videos.